Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to cut out hummingbirds using your brother's scan and cut. These hummingbirds are from the Mosaic Mood Designer Series Paper by Stampin' Up. This is specialty paper, so it's very shiny. If you were to just scan this in right now, it would come out in many, many little pieces. Okay, so my trick to show you is what I have already done prior to this tutorial is I have traced over one of the birds in pencil. Okay, this trick usually works for me, um, especially when I don't have shiny paper, it works a little better. Just be sure that when you trace, you don't trace along the shiny spots. Okay, and then you're gonna scan it in. Okay, so let's go ahead and load the mat. Do this for any, any pattern paper you're trying to cut. I'm using the CM350 or the Scan and Cut 2 for this tutorial because it's less sensitive than my other machine. It just seems to work better. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn it, turn it on. Oops, there's a little glare, sorry about the glare. Not a good, sorry about the glare, we'll just do that. We're gonna go, to, we're gonna turn it on, we're gonna say, we're gonna go to Scan, Direct Cut, because we're directly cutting out the pattern paper, and I'm going to just save the image onto the machine. I'm going to use black and white recognition mode because I did already outline one of the hummingbirds. And I'm going to go ahead and say load the mat. Okay, and I'm going to say start. Now when I tried this on my Scan and Cut STX 125, what happened is it was so sensitive that it, it recognized like a million little pieces on the mat. And then it just shut down on me. It didn't have enough memory. So I'm wondering about that. Um, I'll have to try to figure out why it just keeps shutting down on me every time I scan something this intricate. But I'm just now, I've just outlined one this time, and this is the one that I want right there. We're gonna say okay. And see how it did a really good job of recognizing that one hummingbird? Okay, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that really well. See what I mean? It's just a great job. Now, you might be asking, why don't you just cut out the hummingbird instead of tracing it? I am a much better tracer than I am with the scissors and fuzzy cutting. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fussy, fussy cutting. Okay, I'm much better at that. So I think it's just better for me to trace. I can do it while I'm watching TV, and then I can cut them out. All right, first of all, what I'm doing right now, just so you know, is I'm selecting an area. That will then save the scan and cut from having to process all this extra information all around the hummingbird I'm trying to cut out. Okay, next I want to ignore object size. Okay, and actually what I really like is I can also add an outline distance. Okay, we can do that right there, but let's first ignore object size. Let's get rid of all those extra little bits that we don't want to try to cut that it's scanned in. Now, we can safely say this hummingbird's a couple inches, so we can ignore everything up to a couple inches, no problem. But don't go too big, because if you ignore objects that are too big, your actual hummingbird will disappear. So I'm just gonna say up to about two inches, get rid of all the unwanted bits. You can still edit them out later if you choose to do so. So that's about, that, that'll seem to get rid of everything I don't want. Say okay, say okay. Now I'm gonna add an outline distance of 0 0.04. I like adding an outline distance around my hummingbirds I've cut them with and without an outline distance. I can show you that in a little bit. Let's say okay, outline distance of 0 0.04. Now we're gonna cut. Now in the Brother Scan and Cut 2, you have to set your blade depth. This is specialty designer series paper, meaning it has like a really cool finish on it. I'm trying five, it worked fine. I mean, you can even probably go up to six for blade depth, but I'm doing a five and it seemed to work fine. It cut through my designer shape paper earlier when I tried this. So a blade depth of five is recommended for such thick cardstock. Okay, let's focus that back in so you get, okay, let's see, no extra bits. If there were any extra unwanted bits, you can go into the editing mode and trash anything that you don't want. I'm gonna go ahead and say cut and I'm gonna start. And while it's cutting, and make sure you're, you're, you're it's really good on the mat. Okay, while it's cutting, sorry that it's loud, I'm gonna show you the rest of the paper in this designer series paper stack. Boy, that cut quick, but I'm still gonna show you the rest of the paper in the designer series paper stack. Look, cause look how cool this mosaic paper is. We can do the same trick I just taught you with these roses, okay? So these papers are double-sided. Oh, I think I'm repeating some of the same papers. 
but that's okay. So you have like a dull side and you have a shiny side and really, really cool. This is just the bee's knees. I just love this mosaic pattern like that. And these hummingbirds, again, same trick because some of these little white spots connect into the outer parts. And even though it looks like there's clear defined line, for this one, I also needed a pencil. And there's some shiny side, yay. All right, so I will actually, I mean, I could show you something else really cool we can do once we cut out our hummingbird. All right, so our hummingbird is cut out. Let's see if it works before I remove the image from the mat. Okay, let me just show you what I mean. Okay, there we go. This is the hummingbird I cut out. Before I remove it from the mat, I need to test that it really cut through the mat. So I get under there with my hand and I just see, did it cut through? And it did. Now, if not, while your mat is loaded, then you would load it again and cut it, okay? So all I'm doing is pulling the hummingbird off. I'm gonna show you how to erase their pencil marks. I'm gonna show you a project we can create with it, and we're gonna go from there. So, by the way, if you're worried about your scan and cut, you didn't miss any steps, it just says finish cutting, okay, and that's all. We didn't do anything else. Okay, let's, let's now go through some next steps. Okay, so we're going to, and we'll even make a card. I'll even show you how I would use the Brother Scan and Cut to help me make a card with this hummingbird as well. All right, so here we are. Um, I'm gonna leave the mat loaded just for a second, just to, okay, here's the hummingbird. I'm gonna put it right there and zoom in a little bit. And you're just gonna see that I'm just erasing the pencil marks. Okay, so when you have pencil marks and you're crafting, you need to go to like an office supply store and get yourself a good eraser. And I have one here on my craft table. Here's a good one. Not, I don't mean, you know, just like Office Depot or something. I'll have a link to it too, because you can get them from Amazon. But the, just, I found these the other day. I think they were like 14 for three, $5 or something on sale. And they're white, so they're not gonna, and I'm, I'm trying to erase, I'm trying to erase very vanilla. See, P almost perfect erasing. And I also bend the little, sometimes I bend my little, um, hummingbird while I'm trying to erase it but that's why I'm using the mat a little bit I don't want it to slip so I'm just kind of going in one direction because I want to erase it so we can make something with it then I'll show you the what I've already made and I like to do that at the end of my videos because why cut out all these really cool things with the scan and cut if you're not going to use them for your projects and when you see after I erase this you're gonna say oh I get it I know why she didn't fuzzy cut fussy cut <laughs> because it's a lot easier trying to um, you know just because all I have to do is fix it a little bit with the scissors and that's it it just it got a little bit of wobbly around my line but not much and then I'm done and it's a beautiful cut and it makes it look like I used to dye or something professional like that and I didn't try to cut it with the scissors plus I just like using my scan and cut because really that's why I have it okay so look at that, really nice. And you see how that, what I mean is just a couple little artifacts. I just call them artifacts. So here, like we can go, we can get rid of those. We can just go like that, trim. And yes, I'm using kitchen scissors, I know. Just gotta use whatever you find close to you. I know I have crafting scissors, but this is just what I grabbed close to me. Okay, so I got rid of the artifacts and let me put that in front of a black background so you can see um, how cool this hummingbird is. Okay, and I erase the marks, and it's ready for a card. Okay, so I'm going to show you the card, and then those of you that want to stick around and see how to help, we can use the scanner cut to help us make this card. Well, please stick around. Okay, so we, I have this is mosaic mood, and I want to show you the card that I'm going to make. Okay, so this is the card, and I'm using something from the mosaic mood suite and something from the perennial essence sweet okay so just so you know I'm not using the stamp set that came with mosaic mood I will show you a card I did use with the stamp set in a little bit I am using just the a different stamp set which I'll get to okay so what, what we need for this card and the reason I just want to show you this is I use my scan and cut all the time for all the parts of my projects we're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna make card bases okay let's let's bring this back Okay, so whenever you have, so I'm just gonna put the paper on the mat. You can do this with any version of the scan and cut you have. Okay, I'm gonna just 
Let's bring this screen over. And we're going to hit back, and we're going to hit the back on the screen, and we're going to go back to the point of where you can get to the, or just go home, I'm sorry, go home, and we're going to get to the point where you do the patterns. Okay, the, I hardly ever use a paper trimmer anymore. And that's, you know, not only because Stampin' Up! stopped selling paper trimmers and they're going to come out with something else, but just because why would I use a paper trimmer when my card bases might get a little wonky? When you can use your scan and cut. So go to pattern. Okay, go to pattern. Find my stylus. And you want just a rectangle pattern, so you're going to go to the first one. And we're going to go and we're going to say here, we're going to click on the first one, which is just a square. But we're going to make it a rectangle. So we're going to click on this, this button here, which is this button is when you don't have the length and width in proportion to each other. Now I can change the width independently of the height. I always do my width first, which is 5.25. This is a typical card base. I always make four of them, never, because I know four will fit on here. Okay, 5.25 by, by four, okay? All right, so let me show you a little trick while we're here. Okay, how do I know four will fit on there? Well, because I'm really good at math, yes, well, but that's beside the point. You know by the fact that if you try to hit more than four, just let's just try to say we want six. Let's see if six will fit on there, and we say set. It will tell you, it'll tell you why, okay? It'll tell you, you can only fit four. So I like using that trick. Whenever you're not sure how many things will fit on the mat, pick a ridiculous number and go up real high, and then it'll tell you no, this is the actual number which will fit on the mat. All right, so let's let's cut four, because we never waste, like if we're gonna cut some, like I can go ahead and make four cards, right? Now again, I'm gonna keep it on that blade depth of five. I just said okay, I said okay, I said cut. We're keeping on the blade depth of five. The reason we're keeping it on the blade depth of five is because this is specialty designer series paper, meaning it has that little glossy covering. And I needed to make sure my blade depth will go through all that glossiness. It's almost like if you guys have used a glossy effects, okay, then that's like that, that really that cool stuff that makes gloss on your cards. This is what this paper is. It's fantastic. If you want to order this paper, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And if you want to order any of the supplies I'm showing you, they'll be linked in the description below. And yay, our card bases are already done. Okay, I'm leaving the mat in the machine again. I just leave it in there. I'm gonna say, okay, um, let's check it. I'm gonna unload, show you that. Ah, I just got done saying I'm gonna leave the mat in and I unloaded it. I didn't mean to unload it, but because I could have done my next part. That's okay. You get to see how I remove these from the mat, super simply. Okay, you, when you have mats that are not very sticky, you just, your stuff just sort of falls right off of them. So here are my card bases and we're gonna make one card using these card bases. And then I said, let's just, I'm going to go ahead and go back and do the next part of the card. So I don't need to, if you want to save this, by the way, in fact, I'll just show you that. I like showing lots of tips and tricks. And for those of you that stuck with me, you obviously want to see these tips and tricks. I'm going to use these card bases over and over again. So I would just say save. You can add other stuff down here, but I just say save. Where do you want to save? I want to save it to the machine because why bother saving it to Canvas Workspace when I can just save it to the machine and get to it very quickly? Other choices are, this is my brother Canvas Workspace account. This is my little USB stick, like that. I don't wanna save it there because that's another pain in the butt to try to, you know. I'm just gonna save it right to the machine. This is USB to the computer, but not, you know, now I can retrieve that and use that again just by doing this. Go home, if I were to go to pattern, save data in my machine there's my go to page 10 there's my card bases okay but that's not what this is about this is about this is about making the rest of this card <laughs> so uh, you know i will later do other tutorials on this okay so i was going to leave the mat in there but i didn't now what i know what i need to know is this i want to take i want to make i'm going to make more than one of these cards i've already cut out a load of like these uh hummingbirds and yes my viewers, I know what kind of bird this is because you know how I am with birds. Okay, so I wanna find out how tall this piece is and I wanna make it the size of the card mat, okay? So, I'm gonna find out. Um, I'm just gonna see if it's, oh, it's a little bit taller. Let me see what size that was. Sometimes I can't remember what I did. All right, it was one point, if this is two, 
Okay, this is this is a piece of two, so this was 1.75. Okay, so I know that that piece is 1.75 by um, by 5.25. I'll have all the measurements in the description. The reason I had to use this piece of mosaic back here was because when I tried to put the hummingbird on a different background layer, it just wasn't showing up. And this, this background here really contrasted well. So let's get that piece of designer series paper. Here it is, okay, this is the piece. And it, some one of my like team members was like, is that dirty, is that supposed to be dirty? Uh, yes, it's supposed to be dirty, like kind of like a dirty tile, but like speckled, let's just say speckled, not dirty. But that was meant like that, that, that texture. That's the other side. Uh, we're gonna cut the shiny side. We're gonna cut out four of those because we never waste a good cut. If we're gonna load our mat, <laughs> go through all this work, right? We're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna make as many as we, you know, if we're, if we're making four cards, we just make four of these little strips. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and load. The, I got uh, back to the shapes. I'm gonna go into the rectangle and then I'll load the mat in a minute. Again, do not put it in proportion. Go here. Um, not in proportion. Let's say width is. 5.25, right? The same as the mat. Why is the mat 5.25? So really the reason it's 5.25 is because this card base is five and a half wide. Every time I do mats and layers, I go a quarter inch smaller for each little part of my card. Okay, so 5.25 and let's see. One, and then this one's gonna be 1.75. 1.75. Okay, although I could make a whole sheet of these right now, okay, I don't wanna make a whole sheet of these. I just want four of these because I know I'm making four cards. And the reason is I'm not sure what all I'm gonna do with this paper yet. So I don't wanna like use up this whole sheet of paper. This paper's so cool, I can make a box out of it with all my leftovers. All right, so go ahead and load the mat. I didn't mean to unload it before. Um, okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and say set and go ahead, there's my four little pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay and cut. And you might notice that that when I'm cutting these little strips that these little rectangles on the screen were pretty close together. That's because my pattern interval is set to really low. Pattern interval is how much space there is between shapes that cut out. I've done other tutorials on YouTube about changing your pattern interval settings. So you can check out that. I'll link to the pattern interval setting below in the description of this video. It'll teach you how to change the spacing. Okay, if you missed it, I know my viewers get upset with me when my machine is loud, but I can't help it. But this, what I just said is I will link to a description, uh, I will link in the description a video where it teaches you how to change the pattern interval so that those objects on your screen are not so close together. It were, it's fine, I'm gonna unload now. It's fine when, it, when you're just like make, uh, cutting out these really strong paper, but it's not fine. If your paper wasn't, if your mat wasn't sticky or your paper wasn't strong, and you tried to cut these little pieces too close together, you'd have a big hot mess on your hands. Okay, so here's my little pieces. Like I said, I was gonna show you how to make this card. That's what we're doing. If you just tuned in, we are making make one card with our cool hummingbird. I'm done with the scan and cut portion. Sometimes I use the scan and cut to cut my card bases, but in this case, I have one piece of crushed carry left Crush carry is the card, <laughs> the card color of this card base, and I, I just have one p one card base left, and I saved it for my crafty friends. So let's um, show you how to just go ahead and do the rest of this. So let me to get my simply simply scored tool. Okay, let me zoom out in case you can't see my cool score cool scoreboard. Okay, whatever score you have, whatever score tool you have, okay, that's all you need to use. And I like I like this simply scored because it comes with three of these little three of these little pieces, and I get to put them on the places I use a lot. And a place I use a lot is 4.25. Okay, so just to let you know, a card base. This is a t so you take your eight and a half by eleven piece of cardstock, which a lot of our cardstock comes. This is a piece of crushed carry. You cut it, and now you then you have two card bases. Okay, and they are eight and a half wide by five and a half tall. Okay, so then you need to score in order to make your card. Oop, I was about to use my scan and cut stylus. Nope, instead you need to use the one that comes with the simply scored, this little score tool. And you're gonna to score along the middle of your card. 
You can use the big end, the big ball, it doesn't matter, you can use the little ball. I like using the big one for when, when I'm making a card because the card stock is pretty strong. So you go ahead and you score it along 4.25 where I already put the mark and usually I'm making a lot of card bases because I'm doing swaps or something. And um, swaps is when you trade cards, by the way. And then I take my little, I have a spatula, but you know what? Our brother scan and cut users have, have a cool spatula as well. We have built in, I'm gonna take out my tool and use this little spatula because this will work too. I usually use like a little pampered chef um, or like a little cricket spatula. I'm just um, turning over. So by the way, that's uh, what I did is that was a valley. When I scored, I made a valley. Like I dug in and now I'm gonna make like a mountain. So I fold it like that. So like I scored into the paper, but then I fold up because that's the part that's sort of weakened. Now I'm gonna use my little spatula to make a good little, good little crease on my card. Okay, so I, I just use the edge of my Simply Scored scoreboard. It gives me a nice little place to make sure my card's straight. So it, it, you're gonna notice if you start using scoreboards instead of bone folder, instead of just like not using a scoreboard, and if you use your scan and cut for card bases, you're gonna start to notice, wow, my cards are looking good because I have like even matting and layering. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean, here we go. How cool is that? Perfect matte every time. Let me see if I turn on my light now. Might be able to see that a little better. Can you see that shine on that paper? Okay, I'm gonna turn it back off because I don't like my, my things to get too washed out. Okay, so while we're here, we'll just uh, sort of show, I'm gonna pick the one I want. And the reason I like, so when I did this card, um, I liked the way that my, my what's it called, my mat that went in between the little mosaics like that, see? So that's where I put the mat every time. So I would, I would put this mat or this, this layer in between those lines. And I guess it's gonna do that on all of them. So it doesn't matter which one I pick. And I kind of like it when it's, hmm, like it when, so it's kind of in the centered. Let's see what else, let's see what other, let's see what else we got here. If we do it there, it's also in the center. In the center, so they're all, this, I mean, they're pretty much the same. So it doesn't really matter where I do it, but it's pretty cool. I like how it lines up in like, there's a row of dots above it and there's a row of dots below it. How cool is that? All right, so first I wanna do, first I wanna attach the card mat to the, cause you know, you wanna do like one layer at a time. So I'm taking my handy dandy advanced uh, tape glider. Cause that's just my adhesive of choice when I'm making like a ton of cards and I go through at least a roll or two of this stuff a day when I'm going to my crafting binges, which some of you have been the recipients of my crafting binges. All right, so I put some, this is just double-sided adhesive. See that? I put about that much. You don't really need that much. I just go a little overboard sometimes. And let's make sure the card, it doesn't matter which way the card opens because we haven't put the bird on yet, but it will matter later. Like let's put, make sure that your, make sure your card opens the right way. Okay, so because I use my scan and cut, to make this mat, it was pretty awesome. Okay, so you get a perfect layer. Okay, then you're gonna do, now you're gonna put this piece on. And like I said, I like it when the dots, these little rows are, are there, above it and below it. So now I put adhesive on this side. Also, it's better, you guys, to make the shiny side up on your cards because you know what the adhesive is going to hear adhere better every piece of this mosaic mood designer series paper has a shiny side and it has like a flat side well if you keep your shiny sides up for your cards it's going to help you because you're going to you, it's going to like make the flat sides are going to stick better now let's look, see which way the bird will look i mean see which way the hmm huh. i don't think it matters <laughs> since it's a mosaic but it doesn't matter i'll put the, i'm going to put it like this okay so we're going to put it this way but it doesn't really matter because it's a mosaic and it's all kind of like, it's gonna be kind of covered. All right, so now I wanna show you some really cool Stampin' Up! supplies from our new catalog. Actually, I kind of, I'm kind of liking when I leave my scoreboard there because when I leave my scoreboard there, my camera does not get washed out. So I hope you appreciate that it, you can actually see a little better when you see that. So now what we want is we want to do this part. We wanna do, the um the sentiment the flower where do you see this my crafty friends 
I'm putting down, by the way, this came out of my, this is a little stamping pad I used that came out of my stamping block case. I'm, I'm amassing a stamping block collection. This is what a stamping block is. <laughs> okay, and I have a case for them and this little sponge came out of the middle and I was like, yay. All right, coordinating colors. So you can tell why I'm doing what I'm doing. Coordinating colors with this suite. Mosaic Mood Designer Series Paper. All right, Garden Green, which I don't have that ink right now. Soft Suede. Mint Macaron, okay. Terracotta Tile. Crushed Curry. And the actual color we need to use right now for this project. <laughs> my, my crafting table is a hot mess. All right, and Blushing Bride. That's what we're gonna use right now for the flower is Blushing Bride. Okay, so that, and then it also has like coordinating colors of very vanilla and it has coordinating colors of uh, whisper white. Okay, so in the suite, we're gonna use blushing bride. We're gonna flip open the brushing bride, bride, okay? Flipping the ink op open. We're going to take this stamp set. This is not the one, okay, once again, this is not the one that comes with Mosaic Mood. This is, this comes with the, this is a different suite. This is from the Perennial Essence Suite. This is a new stamp set we have. Okay, floral essence. And you're wondering, what? She put her scan and cut away. How are we gonna cut out this flower? Well, there's a really easy way we're gonna cut out that flower and it's with a coordinating punch. So floral essence, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna take out, these are called photopolymer stamps. I think I've talked about the difference on my channel before, but if not, we need stamping review. These are photopolymer stamps. We're gonna stick the photopolymer stamp onto the stamping block. Okay, we're going to um, do the little tap, tap, tap 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 and we're going to stamp it onto very vanilla because very vanilla is the coordinating color okay okay here's a piece of very vanilla and we're going to do this twice and the, and we're, when we do it we're going to face up we're going to put this i mean it doesn't matter we're going to point one of them up because that's the way the punch faces okay holding it down there for two to three seconds Okay, I'm gonna turn it over and do one over here. Okay, I'm tap, tap, tapping. I'm tap, tap, tapping. Okay, you can always give it a look and make sure. And I'm sticking it on there like that. Do, do, do. Okay, perennial, or floral essence. And now I'm gonna use a perennial punch. Always close your ink or you've got ink all over the place. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you want to do, before you clean your stamp, it's kind of cool to do this too. You can even get like a really nice light stamp that you can use for a third layer and put it maybe behind or something. All right, then, you know, you never waste your ink. When I did this earlier and like I was doing this example, I, my, my top flower didn't come out as, as deep in the middle. So I used a little crush carry to do what's called a little speckling. And I can just sort of do that like with my top one and I just sort of speckled. I just went like crush carry marker. Do, 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 do. I might as well do it again. But it's not really going to be the same effect. And they actually make these really cool flower centers. They, meaning Stampin' Up, makes really cool floral centers. They're like little puffy florals thing, but I'm not using them on this card because my card is already 3D enough and I didn't want to puff it up with a middle flower thing. But anyway, back, back to this punch. I usually label my punches, but since I just got it, it's hot off the press. I don't have like the label yet. But this is called the perennial, perennial punch. So it's a great way of using up scraps of paper and it's a great way of like stamping and punching. And yes, you could have used your scan and cut to cut out that as well. But you know what? When I have punches, I get to, you get 10% off when you buy the punch with the stamp set. So I, I tend to get my punches that way as part of sort of a bundle. All right, those of you that are here with me still are gonna get some more little treats, like how to make your flowers more 3D-like. Okay, so what you do is you put your flowers down and you could use, like if these are real small flowers, you could take your little, what's this thing, score tool and you could sort of poke into them. If they were small flowers, poke, 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 sort of puff up your little 3D flowers. But if you have a big flower like that, I don't tend to use the little score method, score tool method, I instead, use um what i use my little spatulas or bone folders and i take i take them and i just go like this okay i'm turning the flaps it down what you're basically doing is loosening the fibers of your paper okay and this is how you make your flowers more 3d like 
pretty cool. Let me do that again. And I just turn it over. Okay. And you can do you can use a pencil. You can do it with a pencil. You can do it with a bone folder. I'm just using my brother's scan and cut spatula because it was the closest thing I had to, you know, to where I was, and that's why I'm using it. So now you're going to take your little dimensionals. Okay, so like that's the top because I put a little bit of crushed curry in the top, and you're going to make a little cute little flower, 3D flower, and you're going to just use dimensionals. These are the mini dimensions. So we have Stampin' Up has mini dimensionals, which I'll use on the hummingbird, but we also have big dimensionals, meaning foam adhesives. Okay, so you're going to take your little foam adhesives and you're going to put one under there. Now, like I said, my flower is already puffy enough, but that we do make floral centers as well. So you put, you take your little foam off and you just sort of, let me just focus my camera and make sure you guys can see this. And my crafty friends get to see my little 3D flower. Okay. And yes, you can color the flower in more with the blends and do all kinds of stuff with it. So now I have a cute little flower for the hummingbird to go get its little nectar from. All right, and you could put a little gem or whatever in the middle. So let's do some more. Let's do some more with this card. So I, I did this um, wishing you a blissful future. And I took what's called, remember I told you about the coordinating colors, and there was a reason I was doing that. I was telling you the coordinating colors is so that we could, you know, use them for our card. So I'm going to take wishing you a blissful future out of here. It's, it's acrylic. Is that the one? I have to make sure it's the great stamp. Okay, so I'm going to stick it on my, a different stamping block. Stick it on there. And you just, I'm stamping onto my very vanilla first. Okay, I'm stamping onto my very vanilla first. Because then I use the punch to center. So we're going to use a punch to get that out. And yes, can I cut out shapes with my scan and cut? Absolutely. But as you notice, I use a combination of scan and cut and lots of other cool Stampin' Up! products to make my cards. I don't only rely on the machine if I have punches because I like using punches. All right, so here we are, blissful future. I mean, yeah, terracotta tile is the color. Because remember that tile, this is one of our new in colors by Stampin' Up! Remember I told you that it's one of the coordinating colors of the suite. So dot, dot, dot. And by the way, you're like, is it gonna take you an hour to make a card? No, because you're gonna make four cards at once because we just cut out four card bases. So after I get done this video, I'm gonna make four cards at once. I'm gonna use the other. Oh, I told you I'd show you something about the butter, the uh, hummingbirds. Before I forget, I this is without an outline distance. I told you I cut them out with, let me put that on here, with and without outline distances. Okay, so this was, just to see, on the one on the right, ooh, this is getting washed out, sorry. The one on the right has an out, has an, no outline distance and the one on the left has an outline distance. Okay, I told you I cut out some hummingbirds earlier. So I just cut them out different ways, but I like the one with the outline distance better, just so you know, okay. And I cut them out with other paper too, that other planer paper. All right, back to this project. Wishing you a blissful future. So now I'm gonna take that sentiment and I'm going to, okay, I'm gonna go like this and show you. This is called the Timeless Label Punch. Now this part is part of our Mosaic Mood Suite. You'll find this punch in our Mosaic Mood Suite. What I like about it is it's a really wide punch. Okay. Meaning it fits the sentiment perfectly. It's really wide. It can fit lots of long sentiments on it. Okay, so here we go. And then I put on um, some little, okay, let's see. Here we go, wishing you a blissful future. I took some little, these um, these are my new in color faceted dots and I've already used a few of them just on the other one. I took a few of them and I stuck them on there. As you notice, I stuck like a big one and two small ones. Okay, and I do have a little tool for this called take your pick, but you know, hey, it's not, I didn't. I don't have it right here in, in within arm's reach, okay? I don't want to put the third little dot on there yet because I have to see where the flower is going to like, uh, where the flower will be. And notice I pushed my flower, even though I curled it a little, I pushed it back down because it kind of, it melts a little better when you push it, when you push your flower back down a little bit. Okay. So here, so there's my flower. I'm going to put that, see where my flower goes, see where my bird goes, see where my sentiment goes, and then put that third little faceted gem on there. All right. So we need now, we need our dimensionals. 
Okay, so we need one of those. We need one for the flower. Done. Put that sort of up there so that there's room for the sentiment. We need some for the hummingbird. Now that's why I said I would use some mini dimensionals because mini dimensionals give you a little bit more control over where you put the where you put them because like see you want a small one. Let's see. We'll put some small ones around. That way the hummingbird doesn't fly away. Maybe one on its beak, but I don't know if that's going to be too wide. Nope, it's going to be too wide. So we'll put one on his head. And I'm going to put one down here. This way it just keeps my hummingbird from flying off the page. So I'm going to use four of those. Get rid of those little pieces. And yay, we have a card. And when I get done here, I can make three more cards just like it with all the hummingbirds I cut out. Pretty darn cool with I cut out with my scan and cut. If I would have tried to fuzzy cut this, I wouldn't have had like a smooth little bird. It would have been all rough and kind of funky. Okay, let's put, let's see where he goes. I'm going to kind of make them the same. So, you know, kind of, but just because I'm doing a tutorial. So for consistency, so we'll put him sort of sticking out like his little wing. His wing contrasts really well with the background, by the way. So I can put the wing up higher a little bit. Okay, I kind of like it. This one was facing a different way because I had to, because of, you know, just the way I want it to contrast. Okay, now we can put this little guy right there with some dimensionals. And notice how I put him sort of halfway up the little, the little band there. And I would take, for that one, I would take bigger dimensionals. And then we'll put on that third little gem. I just didn't want to make, I didn't want to put the gem on because the faceted gem, or faceted dot it's called, because until I knew where, if this flower was going to block that. So we'll put it about halfway, or no, it's actually two thirds of the way up. See, oops, I forgot to ink it. See, I'm glad I'm doing a tutorial. Keep me on my toes, you guys. All right. Um, I'm not even doing it live. I'm just saying you guys are keeping me on my toes because when I'm teaching, I have to be more aware of things. What I want to do is ink this. So what I do is I, I'm dipping into the, let me, let me tell you how I inked it. I took this, this color, Blushing Bride. It's a good color to ink things in. I dip a little bit of, there's already a little bit of terracotta tile. I was about to dip into that. doesn't matter. Just get a little bit of ink on your stamping block. Okay, putting down my ink. And you're just going to rub it. You're going to take your sponge and you're going to rub your sponge on there. And, and I inked around the edges. Okay, and I should have done that before I put the dot on there. And I only noticed it because I was comparing this to the other card. I usually never make the same card twice, <laughs> unless I'm doing swaps, which are when you trade cards. So that's why I'm like, oh yeah, I inked that one, I forgot. Because <laughs> it's kind of, but this time I'm gonna go ahead and make four cards because I have all the stuff cut already. I mean, four similar cards. They're gonna have different hummingbirds on them, of course. Same sentiments. And I'm going to run out of the little dots because there's only so many of each color. And, uh, you know, only so many of this terracotta tile. But I like to always do things in threes. Okay, I already took the adhesives off there. So let's lay that down about two-thirds of the way up and push down on there. And, of course, don't push down on it if you have ink that hasn't dried. Okay, so far I'm very happy. I need one more dot, one more faceted dot. Because, really, it, when you do things like that with little bling, it's good to have three of them. It just sort of, I mean, I have enough, but I didn't want to use the real big ones. I think they would just take away from my card. I was using this size and this size. Okay, so now I can put um, another. I like using two little ones and one big one. So I like saying there, here's to a, wishing you a blissful future. So there we have it. You got to see why, why do we spend so much time cutting out these little hummingbirds? And it's because we can make beautiful embellishments using them. So, I want to show you one more thing with, that I made with the Mosaic Mood Designer Series paper. I did this at a workshop that my friend Bernie hosted, and we made we all made this card. It was a very simple card to make, okay? Because in the in this this stamp set, sending all happy wishes your way is actually in our in our catalog. A new stamp. It it's really cool because when you stamp the sentiment, it actually runs over on your paper. It, it makes it makes a big old shape. I use terracotta tile, and when you punch it out, you get no border, which is sim super, super cool. Look at that, no white border, or actually in this case, no very vanilla border. I used just a very simple crushed curry card. I didn't even put the basin yet, and it's already got wet. I have to do something to the inside to save this card. Um, it, it, then I used a piece of designer series paper, we all did, and we just stamped, tone on tone, crushed curry onto crushed curry, a couple, little, three little dots. I had a different pack of dots at the time, and mint macron, macaron, whatever, a couple little, 
These are from the stamp set that came with the mosaic mood. So nothing to do with the hummingbird, except that you could stick a hummingbird on here. I mean, why not? Stick a hummingbird on. It goes perfectly with this card. I mean, you could stick, heck, stick two hummingbirds on there. So it doesn't matter, but that's the point is this specialty paper is the bee's knees. I hope you really love this specialty designer series paper, and I hope you'll give this technique a try of cutting pattern paper using your brother's scan and cut. That's all for now. This is the Papered Chef.